Globally, we produce in excess of 320 million tonnes of polymers each year. Over 15% of this number are used to make consumer, institutional and electronic products. Each year, 11 billion tonnes of these goods are transported by ship. That number equates to just over 1.5 tonnes of shipped goods per person based on the current global population figures. But where is it all coming from? Injection moulding is the manufacturing process responsible for producing the lion's share of these polymer products, with its market size being estimated at over 300 billion US dollars in 2022. Traditionally, injection moulding uses costly processes such as CNC milled aluminium moulds and factory sized injection moulders, which make this manufacturing process prohibitively expensive to many. But it doesn't need to be this way. Introducing Moulding for the Masses. Moulding for the Masses is an open source, cheaper alternative to injection moulding that enables anyone anywhere to mass produce polymer parts. This was done by making a compact transportable injection moulder from parts that would be readily available at any hardware shop and using machines that would be accessible in almost any metal workshop. Costs were also brought down by using 3D printed moulds as opposed to CNC aluminium ones. Inspiration was taken from the Precious Plastics homemade injection moulder, however their machine is extremely large and uses lots of material. Theirs is also designed to use traditional CNC aluminium moulds. I wanted to iterate on this design to make a fully transportable version that utilises 3D printed moulds that should result in much cheaper part production costs. Making the moulding for the masses injection moulder is relatively straightforward. The base is made from solid mild steel square bar, the frame is made from mild steel square pipe, the nozzle and ram are made from cylindrical bar and the barrel is made from cylindrical pipe. Materials to build the machine can be had for under £60, comparably cheaper than the €350 Euro expected material cost of the precious plastics injection moulder. The full inventory of necessary materials and machines and detailed instructions on how to build the injection moulder can be found on the Moulding for the Masses Instructables webpage. The largest technical difficulty faced throughout the project was experimenting with different 3D printed materials for the mould and finding the correct temperature for the moulder that would result in a repeatable process that produced good quality parts. I experimented with different combinations of ABS, PETG, PLA and resin for the mould material, PLA, ABS and polymorph pellets for the injected polymer and temperatures ranging between 160 and 200 degrees for the injection temperature on a CR Clark injection moulder. I found the best combination to be PLA pellets injected into PETG moulds at 190 degrees Celsius. The other main technical challenge was figuring out the electronics needed to heat the barrel of the injection moulder. I had several face-to-face in-depth chats to a university electrical technician about both the electrical specifics of the heating system and the health and safety risk factors this may present. During the process I investigated how much it would cost an individual to have 100 units of this basic wheel part produced by three different professional injection moulding manufacturers. The first was Protolabs who gave me a quote of £1,298. The second was Ico Mould, who quoted me $2,691 for the 100 parts. The third company, Heizol, is a Chinese supplier rather than an online based manufacturer. The final quoted price I got for the units was $1,135 US dollars. To use the moulding for the masses injection moulder, first plug it into the mains. Insert the 3D printed moulds into the CNC aluminium surrounds and bolt together, ensuring the two halves are tightly fastened. Next, screw the retaining cap onto the nozzle of the injection moulder. This is to stop the polymer pellets falling out of the barrel whilst it reaches temperature. Pour the polymer pellets you wish to inject into the funnel of the injection moulder. Ensure the handle is raised when you do so, so they are not blocked from falling into the barrel. The next step is to set the desired temperature on the PID controller. I found 190 degrees Celsius to be the optimal temperature for injecting PLA pellets into PETG moulds. Wait for around 10 minutes for the barrel to achieve temperature. When returning to the injection moulder, check the probe temperature on the PID controller display panel. When the temperature you initially set on the PID controller matches the temperature of the probe, unscrew the retaining cap and tightly screw the mould assembly onto the nozzle of the injection moulder. Ensure you do this quickly to prevent the melted polymer in the barrel dripping out of the nozzle. Then firmly push down on the handle of the injection moulder until you can see melted polymer being extruded from the runners of the mould assembly. Turn off the PID controller and unplug the injection moulder from the mains. You should then wait for around 5 minutes for the polymer inside the mould to cool and set. Finally, unscrew the mould assembly from the nozzle, separate the two halves of the mould and eject your polymer part. 
consistent production rates of around one part every 20 minutes can be achieved. This is comparatively fast when set against 3D printing which would take almost five hours to create this simple wheel part. So why moulding for the masses? For one, it provides the cheapest way for small businesses or individuals to reproduce polymer parts. By making this project open source, Moulding for the Masses aims to negate the need for shipping as the step-by-step -step instructions regarding how to build the injection moulder and use it to manufacture can be fully accessed online. This means it could be used to help provide humanitarian aid as some countries have restricted or dangerous shipping routes and these countries are often where these sorts of supplies are needed most. Finally, it can be used as an educational tool for design institutions to provide their students with hands-on experience to a key polymer production method who otherwise could not afford to do so.